comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And you and I, if we're saved, and we are, we have to live by faith. We have to walk by faith and not by sight. Sight is the dimension of all of our five senses. When it says not by faith and not by sight, it's trying to, to realize not by our five senses, by thing, how things look, how things, what, how, what we hear about it. But we walk by what God says about things, what Jesus has already done about everything. Sometimes even our praying, in our praying, we're asking the Lord to do something that He's already done for us. And sometimes what we have to do is say, Lord, I'm asking the Holy Spirit now to help me. He's my helper. Receive what the Lord's already done for me. I need some help in the receiving part. How many know that you and I have struggled all of our lives sometimes in receiving from God? In fact, the biggest fight that you'll ever fight with the devil is, is getting where you can receive from God. He doesn't want you to receive from God. He wants you to do without. Yes. You doing without that miracle, you doing without that blessing, you doing without that breakthrough, that's why he's a thief. It doesn't necessarily mean he took it. It just means that he's got you where you can't get it. That's like a pause and think about that, a sila. Yeah. <laughs> how many understand where I'm coming from? If I don't get it, I mean, you know, hallelujah, it's not going to benefit me. And so I've got to get it, hallelujah to God. So I want to go back a little bit to last Tuesday night and give you one more time the three things that you need to notice when you're under attack. Everybody say, under attack. Under attack. And this is not negative. I'm not trying to speak anything out on anybody. But the enemy is going to try to attack you. Uh, you. Somebody told me one time, I must be doing everything right. The devil's been after me all week long. Then they said, by accident, bless his holy name. <laughs> but it doesn't matter whether you're doing right or wrong. The enemy is your enemy. He is called an adversary. An adversary. Your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. I've often wondered why they use the word devour there because it really means drowned. Seeking whom he can cause to drown in the circumstance, drowned in the situation, drowned. You're, you're just, it's like I can't get out of this. I can't get past this. I'm drowning in it. There's so much. Amen? So the first thing that I want you to know that when you're under attack, your spiritual hunger is really under attack. The Bible says, they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Ladies and gentlemen, the enemy doesn't want you to be filled. He doesn't want you to be peaceful, joyful, full of the Holy Ghost, full of faith, full of wisdom, full of the things of God. Amen. You're the temple of the living God. God wants you full of him. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Anybody ever said you're full of bull? All right, I got a few yelps. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. So uh, spiritual hunger, listen carefully, it's the motivation to go on with God. As long as you stay spiritual hungry, you'll keep going on with God. You'll keep reading that Bible. You'll keep praising. You'll keep worshiping. You'll keep giving God the glory. You'll keep doing things because you're hungry for God. It's your motivation for the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. You've got to realize that. So that is your spiritual hunger is your motivation. I'm going to keep believing the scripture. I'm going to keep standing on the word of God. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. So when I have spiritual hunger and I keep my mind in agreement with my hunger for God and my flesh subdued to that, I'm going to get the victory every time in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now I've just given you the key right there. That's it right there. When I stay spiritually hungry and don't let the devil, because when you get physically sick, one of the first things you know is you lose your physical, you lose your hunger. You don't want to eat. You don't feel like eating. So when spiritually you're under attack, he's going after your hunger for God, reading the word, praying, getting in agreement, 
So what you want to do is you want to keep that spiritual hunger and you want to keep your mind always in agreement with what God says. So when you're under attack spiritually, your spiritual hunger is under attack, your mind will be suggesting to you, you're never going to get your healing. You're never going to get your breakthrough. You're never going to get your miracle. You're never going to get out of this. You're not worthy of this. You're not fit to get, you've not spent enough time in the word of God. This is why this came. It's going to be the blame game. Come on, amen. amen. Okay, I, can take, I can take this beautiful young lady right here and I can just blame her and tear her, the living daylights out of her and guess what? She won't want to eat. She won't go off and cry somewhere. Come on. Hallelujah. You take a couple and they fuss and fight and eat each other up. They're not going to want to go out and eat after that. <laughs> they don't want to go sit down and have fellowship and eat together. They just want to go off. They're not even hungry. No, I don't want anyone to eat anything. So you've got to realize spiritual hunger is you've got to keep that mind in agreement with the Word of God because your mind in conflict with your spirit is what the enemy wants, and that's a double-minded man, and they're unstable in all their ways. When you spiritually have Jesus in your heart and in your thinking, you've got something opposite of what the Lord's done. You're under some attack. This is trying to get doubt here while you've got faith here. Doubt here while you got faith here. Come on. Doubt here. How many of you know I'm, I'm telling the truth? How many of you be honest with me? I'm going to raise my hand. Not high enough for that fan to cut it off. But I know what it's like to have faith here and doubt here. And I've got to get this back under control. I've got to get it under control. I've got to get it under control so that I could be spiritually minded, which is life and peace. But to be carnally minded is death. Huh? Carnal mind means my mind is controlling this. Spiritually minded means that this is controlling this. What my heart, the Lord in me, Christ in me, the Word in me, the goodness of God, the, I'm the temple of God is controlling all of this thinking up here in the name of Jesus. Amen. Right. And y'all going to agree with me? Shout amen. amen. This is the problem. This is the situation. So number one, it's spiritual hunger that that's what the enemy's after every time. Come on in, ain't Shirley. You're just four hours late. How many of y'all love this young lady? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now everybody say spiritually hungry. You need to watch this in your family. You need to watch this in yourself. Amen. You go home at night. Listen carefully. You go home at night. You sit down there. You're exhausted and tired. Your spirit will always tell you, take a little time in the Word, it'll refresh you. Your mind is going to say something else because that's what the devil talks to. Light, and light is here. Light and darkness has no communion with each other. So the devil's not talking to this, baby. He's talking to this. He's not talking to this. He can't stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with your spirit man. You always win when you walk in the Spirit and walk by faith and walk in the light. That's right here. It's in your heart. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Are you listening to me? So when you come home at night, I'm too tired for this, I'm too tired for that. It's talking to you right up here. I'm going to tell you the best thing you can do is just pick, if you just pick up one scripture, it will sharpen you. One scripture. Everybody say it with me. One, if you're real tired, just read Jesus wept. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're not so tired, read the 118th Psalm. Or 119. What's that big boy? You know, like 150, 119, 150 scriptures. So number one, spiritual. Number two, loss of strength. Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you can be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. When you're under attack, your energy must come from the Lord on the attack. Your energy, you cannot defeat the devil using your own natural strength, your own natural wisdom, your own natural way. You can't do it. You can't defeat the enemy with natural energy. You just can't outlast him. 
But you've got to know that you're strength. So what do you got to do? You've got to build up yourself all the time. Keep yourself built up in the Word of God. Just like an athlete. You know what I mean? Just like they do those soldiers in the military. They get up every morning. They run. They do certain things. They do certain things. And I mean, they keep themselves physically fit. Listen to me carefully. Keep yourself spiritually fit. And we're offering to you everything we can. A word every day. Oh, my God. Church twice a week. Bible study once a week. You can get it by email. We we're offering you everything. You got Christian television. You got tapes. You got video. You got everything in the world to equip you in Jesus name. Amen. Today, my wife and I went to a restaurant to eat and one of the waitresses came by. And I noticed my wife saying hello to her. And then when we got to the table, she said, I said hello to her so that you'd know she's been at church the last two Sundays. <laughs> I said, well, thank you, baby. Because <laughs> of my wife, I, she said, oh, how are you doing? I said, oh, how are you doing? You know, and, and later on, she came on and talked to us the last two Sundays, the Sunday before last. She came with her husband this last week. They brought their kids, everything. She says, we've only been coming two Sundays, but we, we, all of a sudden the blessings are just flowing. We're going to try to be there Wednesday night too in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. So you've got to realize your energy has got to come from the Lord. You've got to build yourself up in the Lord. Proverbs 27, 17. Iron sharpens iron and your friend's countenance will sharpen you. Your friends, well, your friends, and Jesus is also your friend. Hallelujah. His, his will sharpen your countenance. In other words, it will affect your looks, your form, your state of being, your physical person. The word of God will affect your person. It's iron that sharpens, it sharpens you. It quickens you. It encourages you. It uplifts you in the name of Jesus. I'm going to tell you, Samson was so strong that an entire army couldn't take him. Nothing could stop him. Nothing could stop him. Nothing could stop that man until something came along to try to weaken him. I'm going to tell you something. When somebody comes along and hurts you, if you try to react in your natural strength, you're going to get the living daylights kicked out of you. If somebody offends you, God, listen now, this is, going to be, this is going to be a hard for, for everybody in this room. Forgiveness is God's power over people. That's why Jesus said on that cross, Father, forgive them. You've got to realize that one of Jesus' statements, y'all listening? One of Jesus' statements on the cross was, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. One day I got so ticked off, I said, Father, forgive them, and they know what they was doing too. <laughs> How many y'all with me? Say amen. When you're under the influence of an enemy, sometimes you don't know what you're doing. You don't realize what you're saying. I've had people say, you know, you, they, they said that, and they said, no, I didn't. When you're under the influence of the enemy, you don't even know what you say. I had a man one time just, just let me have it, and he didn't even remember that he said it. He didn't even know that he said it, but he was under the control of an enemy. When you're under the control of a hurt, a pain, a worry, a fret, uh, somebody hurts your feelings, you can say things that's really not you. Amen. Amen. Anybody just going to stop here and give the Lord a little praise in right in there now? All righty. So we've got to realize these things in the name of Jesus, that lack of strength, lack of strength, lack of strength, lack of strength. All of your enemy, all of your strength needs to come from the Lord. You can't fight nothing, nothing on your own strength. You can't win any battle on your own strength because you don't fight flesh and blood. Everybody say that loud. I don't fight flesh and blood. If you ever said this, I'd like to just take them out back and just beat the living daylight out of them. I'd just like to punch them right in the nose. You know, really, in reality, the Bible says that there's something behind that. There's an enemy behind that. That's why a lot of times people don't know it work, and I'm going to tell you, couples don't know it. Couples don't know it, and they think it's the person that I married, or it's this, or it's that, or it's that, or it's this. It's really the enemy. 
He doesn't want anything that God ordained to ever happen. God ordained family. Go ahead and shout amen. amen. God ordained marriage. Go ahead. You can say amen if you want to. Amen. amen. Y'all need to say it so Cleo can hear it. He's going he's to get married pretty soon. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm going to tell you about loss of strength. Don't let that. Number three, you don't feel like yourself. You don't feel like yourself spiritually. How many you know that I'm telling you the truth? You know when you don't feel spiritual. Because spiritual is a dynamic power. Amen. It's a force. And you know, you really know when you have faith. And really, because it's a force. How many of you know you got, how many of you know you got a leg right now? How many know you got an arm right now? Why? Because it's there. Faith is there. It's a living reality. It's a living force. It's an entity. Because it's Christ. It's Jesus. It's, it's the Lord. Amen. So you've got to realize when you don't feel like yourself, you're, it's after your, it's, after, it's an attack against your spirituality. It's an attack against you. When you don't feel like yourself, it's getting to do, you to do things that you would, you would, to stop doing things you would do when you were spiritual. Amen. Because if the enemy can get me, if the enemy, just like this with me, if the enemy can uh, get me to go f uh, a certain amount of days without doing what I know to do spiritually, he knows that what he did to get me there worked. Huh? He knows that what he did to get me there worked. Am I right about it? You know, if I, if I had to go out here and work in, in this building for 14 hours straight, when I get home, I better get down on my knees and I better plead the blood over everything and everybody because the enemy is looking for something that I would do that would stop me spiritually, even if it's physical labor or whatever that it is. Because we seek first. If you know it, say it. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Because you can work 20 hours a day and get a $10,000 check that week, and if you didn't spiritually cover it co properly, the devil can get away with eight, nine, ten thousand of it before you even blink an eye. Amen. And you wonder where it went. Amen. You wonder where it went. You wonder what happened to it. Come on. You wonder what happened to your money. You wonder what happened to your time. You wonder what happened to your life. You wonder what happened to it. Come on. You wonder what, you don't just wake up one morning and your marriage is over. You don't just wake up one morning and you're dirt poor. You're too poor to pay attention. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. So I'm going to give you something right now. 1 Samuel 17, 24. Everybody say, never retreat. Never retreat. When, when Goliath faced the army of Israel and they heard him talk, they turned around and ran the other way. He started talking to them. And when he said, here's what I'm, y'all do this, I'm going to do this, they turned around and ran the opposite direction. The devil's going to speak to your mind, and if you're not careful, you'll turn around and run off. Never run away. Having done all to stand, stand. Huh? 1 Samuel 17, 48, when David heard him, when David heard Goliath speak, he heard them when Israel heard them. The Bible says, read the scripture, that the children of Israel, the army of Israel, turned around and ran away, and David took off and ran against him. Yeah. Ran right at him. While the army of Israel is turning around in retreat, David's running right at Goliath and wins the battle. Amen. Wins the battle. So you've got to get, I'm not retreating, I'm not backing off, I'm not, I, I'm not, you know, I'm just not, I'll tell you what, I just need a, you never need a vacation from the Word of God because it is your vacation. It is a vacation. I mean, it's, 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 it's breath, it's life, it's a drink of cold water on a hot day. Do you love me? It, it's the bread of life. Everybody say the bread of life. It, it'll renew your strength. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. You say, well, pastor, I've been serving God a long time. How come I'm having issues with strength? 
It's because you've got to ask the Holy Spirit how to get it into your life and into your mind and into your body. You've got to, you've got to say, Lord, I'm going to live by your strength. You've got to hold some conversations with God. You've got to talk to God. Amen. I've got to talk to God. If I don't talk to Fonda, my marriage is not going to be very strong. If Fonda says, I love you, and I go, well, sooner or later, I'm going to come to church, and I ain't going to have a tooth in my mouth, and both my eyes are going to be black. How many of you know that ain't no lie? I can. <laughs> Amen? Oh, my God, it ain't no lie. I'm <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you that I got to talk to her. Come on. Everybody say, I got to talk to the Lord. Come on, say it again. I got to talk to the Lord. If you come Sunday morning and I stand there and just look at you like a complete idiot, y'all ain't going to come back after a while. I got to talk to <laughs> The Nate nearly lost his popcorn right there. How <laughs> I many y'all with me? Say amen. You can't do it. Your kid run in and say, you know, I'm hurt. You go, you got to talk. Everybody say, you got to talk. With the heart man believes, with the mouth man speaks. With the heart we believe, with the mouth we speak. The only way the devil can stop it from our mouth is to intercept it by putting something dumb opposite of what's in our heart, in our mind. And he cuts it off. So we got to do it. 1 Timothy 6, 12. We got to fight the good fight of faith. We got to fight, fight. Everybody say fight. fight. That word fight there in the Greek means to contest publicly. To contest it publicly. So how do I contest publicly? With my mouth. I got to say it out of my mouth. I'm going to ask all of you. I'm going to ask every one of you to create this week sometime you get you a piece of paper and you write things that you need to declare over yourself every morning. If it's just three or four sentences. I am more than a conqueror through him that loves me so. God has given me the victory through Jesus Christ. My God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. If you will do that every morning, I promise you, you'll feel energy and strength come inside you because you're confessing it. You're believing it. You're going to hold to those scriptures. You're going to let them sharpen you. You're going to eat them. You're going to eat them. You're going to, Holy Ghost, you're going to help me make these scriptures me. They're going to be the bread. Of, how many believe you are what you eat? Well, I'm fixing to turn into a Dairy Queen cup. <laughs> oh, my God. The other day I went into the Dairy Queen with my wife. The lady looked at me and said, how big of a blizzard do you want? <laughs> she didn't even ask me what kind. She knew. <laughs> Hallelujah. She started getting them butterfinger crumbs out right then, right there. I said, How dare you ask me what size I want? Hallelujah. XL, glory to God. <laughs> fight to contest publicly. Fight the good fight. Fight the good fight. Why is it a good fight? Because if I, I, the battle is the Lord's, I'm to fight the fight of faith, I'm to believe. I'm to believe. And it says this, and we don't get it. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life or keep hold of your eternal life. Yes. Now I'm going to share something with you. It is one of the... the <sighs> I'm either going to live in time or I'm going to live in eternal life. And the more I live in eternal life, time won't have no control over me. Amen. 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 How many know that Jesus came to give you life and eternal life? And how many believe you already have eternal life right now? Just kind of wave your hand at me if you believe you already have eternal life. We'll use it. Use it. Eternal life is mag it's power packed. It's magnificent. It's extreme. And if you know it, you can defeat the temporal things that are going on right now. Wait a minute. This is just, this just temporal. I've got eternal life. 
this is just temporal, and anything that's, anything that's in time or temporal can be changed. And you change it with the eternal. How many know that you change the temporary with the eternal? Amen. By just not letting it bother you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. When you are weak, you say things that will make you weaker if you're not careful. No army could defeat Samson, but a woman did. A woman did. Why? The wrong woman. The wrong woman. And he started telling her things out of his mouth. He started speaking. He started saying things. He started speaking. He didn't talk to her about God. He talked to her about himself. Amen. How many of y'all love me? Amen. Don't say things that'll make you weak. Don't think things that'll make you weak. Don't do things that'll make you weak. The enemy will get you into a trap to weaken you. I'm going to say that again. The enemy will trap you to weaken you. Huh? Do y'all love me? Okay. I'm going to give you some things that'll help you when you are weak. Psalm 6-2 is the first thing you need to do. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am weak. Now, I want you to look at me when you're weak. Everybody say, when I'm weak. When you're weak, have mercy on me, Lord, for I am weak. When you're weak, your faith is under some attack and you need mercy help. Amen. Everybody say, I need mercy help. Because mercy endures forever. Mercy endures forever. Psalm 6, 2. Have mercy on me, Lord, I'm weak. Say it with me. Mercy on me, O Lord, I'm... No matter who you are, you're going to need mercy. No matter how much faith you've got, you're going to need mercy from time to time. I ask the Lord, I ask the Lord, I tell you, uh, I came in here Sunday morning with my message all ready to go. And I'll be honest with you, I was a little physically tired. I've been making a stand with a whole lot of people. Last week, I got over 50 telephone calls for need and, you know, praying for people and different things like this and this and this and this. And the Lord had gave me that message and I walked up there and that's why I said, I know some of you think I've been snorting sawdust, but this is just the Lord moving in this house. Amen. How many y'all with me? Say amen. amen. Everybody said, have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me, Lord. You, sometimes you just need to God, you don't have mercy on me because right now I'm a little bit weak. You got hit by something. And I need your mercy. Everybody say, I need your mercy. Always remember God's mercy endures forever. It's higher than the heavens. It's higher than the heavens. Let me give you another scripture. Joel chapter 3 verse 10. Joel 3 verse 10. Let the weak say I am strong. That's the second step. You've got to say it. Anything you want from God has got to come out of your mouth. You've got to say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. Faith has a confession. If you believe that they love you, you're going to say, I love you. Faith has a confession. Faith says something. If you believe in the mercy of God, you're going to say something. So I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Say it with me. I am strong. It doesn't say to say you're weak. It says to say you're strong. It doesn't say call a friend up on the phone. You know, I'm just so weak right now. Is that what it tells you to do? Then don't do it. The enemy wants you to do something that the Bible never says you can do. It says to say you're strong. Well, that's a lie. That's putting on. Y'all put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it says. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on. Amen. Amen. Put on. Put on. Put on. You've got to get down to where you believe it. I want you to go with me to Isaiah 35. Isaiah. That's how Medea would say it. Isaiah. Hallelujah. Y'all getting anything out of this? Hallelujah. 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 
I'm going to show you something now in Isaiah. Y'all there yet? Yeah. If you're there yet, say yes. If you're not there, say no. Yes. All right, we're getting there. Isaiah chapter 35. 35, and that's no jive. Notice what it says. Verse 3. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knee. And confirm the feeble knee or make it firm. Here's how you do it. Say to them, say to them that are fearful hearts, say to them, be strong, fear not. God's going to come with vengeance. God with recompense. He's going to come and take care of you. Amen. We got to say that. We've got to say it to one another. Yes. We've got to say about ourselves, I'm strong in the Lord. I've got to build communion with God. The Bible says, seek his face and seek his strength. For a, about a year, there were some ministers on TV that told us it was wrong to seek the power of God. That God was mad at the church for seeking his power. But the Bible tells us to seek his strength and to seek his strength. Yeah. To seek the Lord is to seek his strength. I need to quit people telling me what not to do with God and start telling me what I can do with God. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. I need all this good news business. Yeah. Right. Right. Huh? Yeah. Hallelujah. I've got a group of young men that are listening to me on the telephone, I mean on the internet. They're not coming, but there's a group of young men. And uh, somebody in my family talked to them the other day and said, we've been listening to Pastor Randy on the, our phones and on the internet, and we've been listening now for a few weeks, and we've never heard him say one thing that's not good news. Amen. They haven't yet come into the church, but they're listening in the name of Jesus. Amen. How many thank God for people listening Amen. in the name of Jesus? you got to say to them. Everybody said, say to them. So when you go around on Sunday, just don't say, man, you look good. Man, you look good. Man, you smell good. Tell them you're strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. Don't go up to him and say, man, I can't believe what Sharon Brinson, I can't believe how her hair looks today. Look at that crazy woman. She must have missed her appointment at the... <laughs> Time out. I'm saying hypothetically. I just want to... She goes, fly. Amen. How many of y'all with me? Say, we're not here to talk about each other. We're here to talk about Jesus. Amen. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Oh my God, amen. amen. Hallelujah. How many of y'all love the Lord? Amen. So that's what you do it. Let's go, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 34. It says, by faith, out of weakness, they were made strong. Out of. Everybody say out of. Amen. It means they were weak, but by faith, they got strong. Huh? Yes. Uh, yes. By faith they were made strong. Faith in the word. Faith in what God says. So that's what Hebrews eleven thirty four in that scripture says. Out of weakness were made strong. Out of weakness were made strong. Amen? So if you're weak, God can make you strong. He'll make you strong. He'll, he'll, he'll give you strength. That's what Caleb said. I'm as strong today at 80 years old that I was 40 years ago at 40 years old. I can still kick, I can still kick giants off mountains. Amen. I can still do it. I can still do it. Say it with me. I can still do it. I plan on doing more than I've ever done before if somebody just let me do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Age is nothing. It's faith. It's everything. Right. Yeah. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It don't matter. It just don't matter. It just don't matter. Age doesn't matter. Lack of education don't matter. It's what you believe. I said it's what you believe. Let's go to Romans. The Roman road. Chapter 4, verse 19. Romans 4, 19. I'm going to tell you a story about Addie. In the church, Addie. How many of y'all know Sister Addie? Did y'all see her get up there Sunday morning? I, I was totally shocked. I was up there and all of a sudden I saw Randy High start dancing. I saw him start dancing. And, and uh, how many of you know that, that that was really something? 
because Randy ain't a dancer. <laughs> hey, he, he, but he was just so graceful and pretty, wasn't he? Randy was dancing. He did, and the next thing I know, Eddie just come right out there, and she was just as graceful and just, just, just a dancing all over the place. I'm going to tell you why she was dancing. Because the doctor told her that her heart was bad, sending her to a heart surgeon. They said it's all clogged up in there. She couldn't even walk across the floor without sitting down. She couldn't go across the street. She would feel like she was going to pass out. Last week she called and told me about it. We got down on our knees and prayed. She said the next day I got up and I went and walked a mile and didn't even breathe heavy. She said I, I, I made my bed up for the first time in weeks and it didn't exhaust me. She said, Pastor, God healed my heart completely. And I just had to get up and dance before the Lord and show that I, she said, I just had to do it to show that my heart was healed in the name of Jesus. And she just wept like a baby. The other day, you remember, niece got up and just ran around the building. That's because her, one, one of her grandsons, that something was wrong with it. All of a sudden, that turned around. And it made her get up in church and run completely around the building. Because of what she saw, she had been waiting on God to see. And God let her see it. Anybody going to help me out? Any, every message ought to give you strength. Everything you do ought to give you strength. Everything about God strengthens, strengthens. It doesn't weaken it. Strengthens, strengthens. Amen. Give, let's give the Lord a praise for Eddie. Amen. Amen. Think about that testimony about it gave with pancreatic cancer and on these drugs and they couldn't do nothing. And he, he lives across over there and been watching me mow and watching us do. And we would wave at him when we would see him outside on his front porch. And he ventured into church came down and he had communion yeah. Yeah. and God knocked him on the floor two weeks ago yeah. and the doctor told him that tumor has decreased 75% Amen. in the last few Amen. days. What's that? Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Give God a crazy praise. Hallelujah. What? is God trying to do right now. We ought to give him a praise about that. Amen. Huh? Glory to God. Look at Romans chapter 4. Hallelujah. Verse number, let's start in verse number 19. Being not weak in faith. This is Abraham. He considered not his own body now dead. He didn't even think about his body being 99 years old. No, no, no. No, no. Quit thinking about how old you are. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to take Fonda. We're going to jump out of a plane. We're going to snorkel in the deepest ocean. How many of y'all want to go with me? Amen. There's a few that want to go. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to out of my All right. He's t- being not weak in faith. Everybody say weak in faith. Weak in faith. So when you're weak, let me tell you, you better be careful that it's not affecting your faith. Right. Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in Faith giving glory to God. So strong faith says, Lord, I thank you that it's done. I thank you that you paid the price for it and it's done. That's strong in faith giving glory to God. You give glory to God because he's already paid the price for it. It's mine because he paid the price for it. Huh? Am y'all with me? It's mine because he paid the price for it. Do you believe that? Let's try it again. It's mine because Jesus paid the price for it. 
let me put it down like this. Let's say that you uh, rented an apartment and every month when, you came, when he, the, the guy came to collect, he'd go up every month. And one month it was 400, the next month 425, and next month 450, the next month, next month. And you get behind and now he's harassing you. And all of a sudden a new owner, a new owner comes and buys up the complex, comes to you and says, I see that you're $5,000 behind. I want you to know that I forgive you the debt and you get to live here now the rest of your life absolutely free because I bought this thing for you and I'm giving it to everybody that's here as a free gift. And you get to live here the rest of your life for free. How many of y'all want to move into that place? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to fix everything. I'm going to keep it running for the rest of your life. So you're there, and about two weeks into it, the old landlord shows up, knocks on the door, and says, you still owe me that $10,000. If you're not careful, he will intimidate you, and you'll get back into fear. You've got to look straight at him and say, you don't own this anymore. That's right. Why? Because the Bible says you've been bought. And we're not using that. It says, we have been bought with a price. We are not our own. Therefore, we are to glorify God in our body and in our spirit, which is the Lord's. Why? Because that's what we've got to keep up with. And in the middle part, we've got to keep thinking the Word of God. We think the Word of God. We think the Word of God. We keep our spirit and we keep our flesh just giving God the praise and the glory. It's subdued, giving God the praise and the glory. Amen. That's why it says, lift up hands that hang down and call upon the name of the Lord. I would that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to work. Just go like this. People say, what are you doing? Oh, just tell them you got your hairspray mixed up with your deodorant. <laughs> I can just see Shane going around the ball. <laughs> and you tell them, I'm just, the Bible says lift up and, and, and everywhere. And I just thought I'd just do it here. I'd just do it here. I'm just obeying the Bible right here. I'm just lifting up my hands everywhere and just saying, Hallelujah. Just thank you, Lord. You're going to read the scripture. Y'all listen to it. I've been meditating this scripture for the last five hours. Hallelujah. It's one you talk about on 20. Yeah. And amplified. It says, no unbelief or distrust made him waver, doubt, and question concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. As. 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 Thank you, Lord. Let's try it together. Thank you. Let's say it like country folk. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come on, a little bit more country. Come on. Thank you. Woo, stand up there and tell everybody. Show, show them how to do it, buddy. Come on, y'all ready? Y'all ready? Thank <laughs> you. That's how your mama does it? I love your mama. <laughs> Your mama got to come to church pretty soon. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Amen. How many of y'all getting this? You got to maintain it. You got to maintain it. You got to do it in the name of Jesus. How do you win? How do we win? How do we win? Hallelujah. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Ephesians 6, 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you will be able to stand against every one of the wiles of the devil. Every one of them. Everybody shout every one of them. Your mind, your mind on the problem cannot ease the spiritual or mental pressure that an attack will give you. Your mind on the problem, every time there's an attack, there's a little spiritual pressure. Every time there's an attack, there's spiritual pressure, there's mental pressure. Will you agree with me? If that spiritual pressure stays long enough and mental pressure stays long enough, it will turn into physical pressure and that can destroy you and make you sick and kill you. 
So you, if you keep your mind on the problem, your spirit, your, the pressure will build spiritually and mentally, and then you won't be able to handle it. You will not be able to handle it. God never wanted or desired for you to live under one second of spiritual pressure. The Word of God will take care of that. Amen. Mental pressure, the Word of God will take care of that. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Amen. I'm going to tell you a secret that when I give you this thing here at the bottom, you might not understand it, but this is exactly what will happen. If you live by faith, faith will cause God's will for you to begin to form and come to you. If you live by faith, what, what, faith in what? Faith in God. Have faith in God. Say it with me. Have, Have faith, faith in, in God. God. You say, well, I, I don't understand. As the Holy Spirit. He is, he, he is the Spirit of, of God that will teach you yes. and guide you. Amen. Holy Spirit, help me to live by faith and help me to live in such a way that the will of God for my life will form and come to me and shape my life. Amen? Amen. If you'll do that last thing I've written down this board right there, right there, your life will start changing dramatically. 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 The Holy Spirit is your helper. Do you believe it? Yes. How many know we've neglected him? Everybody in this room, me included, we've all neglected him in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Amen. We've neglected him. Yes, we've neglected his help, his teaching, his guiding, his training, his voice. Come on, are you with me now? We've got to get close. We've got to get close to that union and that communion in the name of Jesus. Amen? In the, give, the God, give the Lord a crazy praise. Come on. Yeah. I'm going to help you out. We're almost through. Let's go to Luke 23, 34. I want to get into that. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke 23, 34. Uh. Years ago, I pastored in an, another town. I was hired by three men. They, they had a board of three men. They only had 18 people in the church. I don't know why you need three men on the board when you got 18 people. And the man that was the head of the board, I don't even think he believed in God. I'm just telling you. I'm not judging him. I'm just telling you by his actions. And I would preach on a Sunday, and he'd call me on the phone that afternoon. I had to, we had to live in the church. We had to live... In the offices at the church, because it's seventy-five dollars a week, what are you going to live in, huh? I remember one day we opened up two cans of green beans to eat it, and we got a knock at the church door. It was a transient passing through town, and said, "Can you feed us?" And I said, "Yeah, come on." We were opening up two cans of green beans. Come in. He said, "I ain't coming in." For one year, $75 a week. Ask, ask my mom. She'll tell you the truth. And so uh, he called me up and he said, you're the worst preacher I've ever heard in my life. And I'm going to kill him. I am going to go there and throw my empty cans of green beans at that <laughs> idiot. Are you with me? I mean, I, I mean, it just, it just, it was just crazy. I mean, you understand, it was crazy. Well, the church began to grow, and it got up to a little bit more, and 50, 75. I went on a 40-day fast. I didn't eat any food. I saw, I've told the story, I saw chicken legs dancing in the night in the course line. <laughs> Fried chicken legs, not raw ones, not, not one with feathers on them. Amen? Oh, it's crazy. I ain't lying to you. I saw crazy stuff. God told me to stay in the book of Psalms for that 40 days. I did not eat for 40 days. I did not eat for 40 days. I drank water, stuff, you know, but no food. And uh, I stayed in Psalms. He told me, 
to sleep from 8 o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock noon, only four hours a day. I obeyed God. I obeyed God. It, it just broke everything. Everything just broke loose, and it grew. Well, we got up bigger. We were in 200 people, 250, 300 people, 400 people. And uh, so we, uh, some people in the church went to the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Bible bookstore thing in that area, and they went in there and tried to charge them stuff, and they couldn't charge it. And they said it's because the church uh, owes us some money. So they came to the board instead of, and said, we tried to buy some stuff for the children's church, and the church owed them money. So the, the, this man in the board and the th two guys in the board decided to call me in. And they called me in and said, we're going to fire you. I said, okay, Why? And they said, well, you didn't pay the bill at the bookstore. You've been charging it. It's three or $400, and uh, you hadn't been paying the bill. I said, okay, that makes sense to me. I said, uh, now, hold on, guys. Uh, where do all the bills of the church come? And the head deacon said, well, they come to me. I said, uh, who writes all the checks? I have no power to write a check. I have no checkbook from the church. Who writes the checks and pays the bills? The head board member said, me. I said, so if I, and I said, who has the power to sign at the Bible bookstore? I don't. And the head deacon said, I do. <laughs> so I said, let me get this right. You went there, you charged, you got the bill, you pay the checks. I can't charge. I can't get the bills. I can't write the checks, but you're going to fire me. And they thought, and they thought, he didn't do it. I wasn't fired. But I was hurt. Because they became the accuser of the brethren. So I was hurt. How many understand hurt? Hurt will weaken you. I had to learn through that process of that man like never before. You don't fight flesh and blood. Because you'll kill them. How many, how many are going through a battle with any kind of a human being right now? Just wave your hand at me. Go ahead. You can lift a foot up if you don't want to raise your hand. You're not fighting flesh and blood. Yes, I am, and I'm going to hit him with a sledgehammer. No, say it out loud. No, I'm not. Because the Bible says I'm not. It's the enemy picking a fight with me through them. Hmm? Are you with me now? How many y'all love me anyhow? Huh? I'm just waiting until all of y'all think I'm not trying to do nothing to nobody and y'all forgive me for even bringing this up. <laughs> but Father, forgive them. Everybody say, Father, forgive them. Paul said, if you forgive anybody anything, I, I'm going to forgive them right along with you. Now that, that scripture kind of gets to me. Let, let me give you where the scripture is so that you'll know. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. To whom you forgive anything, I'm going to forgive it with you. So in the person of Jesus Christ. Isn't that something? So that tells me that I may need some help forgiving somebody. I may need to go to somebody and say, you know, I'm having a struggle a little bit with this thing over here, and I need you to get an agreement with me that we can get this person forgiven. Because loving and forgiving and faith is so powerful. Everybody say so powerful. That sometimes we need some help doing it. Is anybody with me? Yes. Huh? Sometimes we need some help being able to release that while we're holding it to ourselves and not getting us an agreeing partner. Come on. Well, I just don't know want anybody to know. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, if you really have a spiritual friend, it doesn't matter what they know. But if you tell somebody that's not spiritual, they could turn around and gossip it and use it on you. You better be smart enough in who you tell. 
Amen. Amen. Y'all love me anyhow. Let's give the Lord another praise because I'm fixing to have to be out of time here. Let's go to James chapter 4. We're almost through. Y'all glad you come? James chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. I'm going to show you how to win the battle. James 4, 6 and 7. Say it out loud. Will help me win the battle. But he giveth more grace. <laughs> I'm just going to wait for you to get through shouting. But he giveth more grace. Try it out with me. But he giveth more grace. You hadn't yet got all the grace God's got for you. You hadn't even yet lived, lived and walked and enjoyed all the grace God's got yet. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he says, God resisteth the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. So here's the key. Verse 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Why? Because he's got the grace. Submit yourself to the one that's got the grace. Then resist the devil. Don't resist the devil first. Submit to God first. Go and get the grace that you need to, to resist the devil with. Don't try, don't try, don't be saying, oh, I can take care. No, 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 no. Make sure you go to God. God, I'm coming for grace. I'm yielding to you first. Now I'm going to go resist the devil because I got the grace to do it with. And he will flee from you. I want to say that again, and he will. Do y'all believe this scripture? Yeah. Y'all believe verse 7? Yeah. Say, I believe. I believe. Verse, seven. verse 7. All you got to do is believe. Okay, everything's possible. Submit to God. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. Amen. Submit to God. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. If we, had that, if we had that one scripture with warfare, we'd win every battle right there. Right. Right. Submit to God. Submit. Yeah. Resist the devil. Yeah. He'll flee from you. Are you with me? Yeah. All you've got to do is choose to believe. All you've got to do is get in there and believe a word from the Scripture. Every time you face something, search the Scripture and get you a Scripture that you're going to stand on in that situation. If somebody calls and says something to you, go get you a Scripture. Get this into your mind. I'm going to go get a Scripture. Get this into your thinking. I'm going to go get a scripture. Come on. Something happens at work. Your retaliation, your rea reaction. I'm going to go get a scripture. Amen. Something comes up in your body. I'm going to go get a scripture. Something comes up at work. I'm going to come on in your family. I'm going to go get a scripture. And if you do that, a scripture will appear out of those pages to you. And it may not even look like it makes sense in the situation you're in, but it don't have to. It's still a scripture. Amen. Get in there. I'm going to go get a scripture. But even before you call the doctor, even before you tell your friend, even before you do anything, and let me tell you something, you've got to go to God even before you come and you'd call me to pray for you. Huh? How many of y'all love me? I'm telling you how to win. You've got to do this. You've got to do this. Why? Uh, if you're not careful, Hebrews 10, 35, you will cast away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. You've got to keep your confidence in the Scripture. You've got to keep your confidence in what God says. You've got to put your confidence in God. You can't even put your confidence in me or this church. It's got to be in God. I'm not here. I'm not here to guide you. I'm not here to guide you. The Holy Ghost is here to guide you. I don't want you to follow me. I want you to follow the Holy Ghost. I want you to listen to me because I'm vowing to give you the good news. I want you to listen because I'm going to give you something to give you faith. Come on. 
But the Holy Ghost is your bottom line teacher. And if the Holy Ghost is inside me helping in the teaching, then I'm a safe, I'm a safe thing to be around. Come on. It don't, I don't matter if I got an ordination on the wall or a certificate or this or that or the other. It matters about if the Holy Ghost is inside the teacher or inside the preacher. How many of y'all love me anyhow? Say amen. amen. Glory to God. Almost finished. Almost finished because it's straight up time. Hallelujah. I've got, I've got to hold to the word of God. Quit making it complicated. I'm going to finish with this. Quit making it complicated. Quit making trusting God complicated. Reading your Bible complicated. Praying complicated. This yoke is easy. This burden is light. It's easy. The easiest thing you'll ever do is read your Bible. The easiest thing you'll ever do is trust God, pray. The devil made praying hard by talking to you. The devil made by reading your Bible hard by talking to you. The devil made Bible uninteresting by talking to you. It's the greatest book in the history of mankind. It's the greatest stories in the history of mankind. Not even Russell Crowe could paint Noah like Noah was Noah. Amen. Not even Charlton Heston could play. He did pretty good. But he couldn't be Moses like Moses was Moses because Moses had the anointing. Put your confidence in the word. Put your confidence. Don't let the devil rob you of your confidence in the word and prayer and how much you love it and how much you need it and how much you want to be with it. Amen. Huh? Amen. Would Sheree live in hell to think that Shane would say, boss, boss man, I'd, I'd like to work 24 hours a day. I just don't want to go home. Can I sleep up here? Can I put a cot up here? I just don't want to go home, boss man. I just don't want to. And she calls him on the phone. I'm too busy right now. Wouldn't it be a shame for them not to be able to be together? So? Yeah. How many you understand that that's what the devil's after? Amen. It's for you not to be with the Word of God. Amen. It's, it's God's Word is God. Praying is God. Yeah. Muslims can't pray because it's not God. Right. Hindus can't pray because it's not God. Right. I'll finish with this. A Hindu woman wants to get pregnant and she can't. So she's going to go down and she's going to buy some milk or get some milk from a cow that she won't eat because it's her grandmother that's already passed away and now she is a cow maybe. I'm y'all with me. Because they believe you pass from, in some time, you're an animal, 10 times, 15 times, and one time you'll be a human. And so she wants to have a baby, so here's what she's going to do to remedy that. She's going to go get some holy milk from a holy cow. <laughs> holy cow. She's going to take it and, and let the rats drink out of it. Because they're some of her kinfolk too. And the rats, while they get in it and drink of it, are going to go to the restroom in it. But that's okay because it comes from kinfolk. So it's not bad for you. So then after they've done that in there, then after a few days, she's going to take that milk that they've been drinking out of, she's going to raise it up to her mouth, and she's going to drink it. Now you tell me how easy it is now for you to trust God. Can I get some kind of witness? Can I get an amen from the congregation? Can I get a shout right now? Does anybody want to dance right now? How many of y'all with me say amen? Oh, isn't God good now? <laughs> Next time you sit down and you're, you know, if you like to eat meat and you're eating that steak or you're eating that chicken, you ought to thank God you're a Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Because if you want, you couldn't eat that baby. <laughs> well, how many glad you came tonight to say amen? amen? Father, we love you. We appreciate you. We bless you. We thank God for you in Jesus' name. Amen.
DEMEN